Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, what's called the law of total variance. So it's a way for us to calculate a uh, variance of a uh, of a random variable. Um, well, I mentioned before that you can't mix random mix uh, variances, but this is uh, the the rule that's going to allow us to actually calculate uh, total variances. Uh, so let's look at an example. I want to illustrate it by uh, reminding you of some uh, mixtures that we had before. There was a discrete mixture problem that I did, uh, where an insurance policy reimburses only one claim per year. Uh, random policy holders 20%. Uh, probability of no loss in the next year and an eight, uh, no loss in the next year would mean the claim amount is going to be zero. 80% probability that uh, there is a loss. So this is a 20%, 80% mixture. And when there is a loss on that 80% of the time, the claim amount is going to be a uniform distribution with a mean of 1000 and a standard deviation of 100. And we are asked to calculate the variance of this claim amount. Uh, in the next year. And so, uh, again, the, uh, the, the warning here is that you can't mix variances. In other words, the variance of this claim amount is not going to be the expected value of the random variable that's defined to be the variance of the claim amount given the uh, indication of, of which case that you're in. Uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, if you try to mix variances, you'll always get an underestimate. So see what I just did there on the, on the slide. I, I'll go back. I had the variance was not equal to uh, this expected value. And then uh, again, the expected value is always an underestimate. And so uh, the, the variance is always going to be greater than that. Not only that, though, this is the cool part. I know exactly by how much it's less than. It's less uh, the, 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 the mixing the variances is less than the variance exactly by the variance of this other random variable that's the expected value of the claim amount given uh, the indication. So, uh, so I get an equality here in this in this discrete case. Let's look at a uh, uh, and again this is this is referred to as the law of total variance. Uh, let's look at the continuous mixture problem uh, that we did in a previous example. This was uh, with continuous mixtures. You have a random variable that's defined parametrically, uh, meaning that uh, there are some parameters, and one of the parameters is itself a random variable. So that's what a continuous mixture is. It is itself not only a random variable; it is itself a continuous. Uh, a, a, a continuous random variable. And so um, uh, in this case, uh, the example that we did in a previous video, we had the number of workplace injuries cap in uh, was a Poisson distribution with a parameter of cap lambda, where cap lambda was a, uh, uh, a uniform distribution uh, over the interval from zero to three. And we were asked to calculate the variance of this unconditional distribution of cap in. And, and again, it can't be mixed. Uh, but once again, the variance, uh, if you try to mix it, the variance is always going to be greater. So that I did, I did this again. I just switched the, uh, the not equal to to a greater than. And I know exactly how much to, I need to, to, to add to the right-hand side to correct uh, to get an equality, and it's the variance of the expected value cap n given uh, cap lambda. Uh, so that's the law of total variance. So look at the uh, equations that are in, in uh, I guess, red and green, uh, the two equations there. And uh, that is the law of total variance. And so let me just generally write it in terms of, of just general random variables, cap x and cap y. And uh, the inner, my, my inner geek is going to come out in me because look how beautiful mathematically, look how beautiful that, uh, that equation is. That the variance of cap x is the expected value of the variance of cap x given cap y plus the variance of the expected value uh, of cap x given cap y. Uh, just a, a, a beautiful equation. That's a, my inner math geek coming out in me. Okay, so let's apply this uh, law of total variance to the, uh, to the previous two problems that we did. This was the discrete uh, mixture problem. And uh, when we did this problem before, we didn't have, of course, we're going over the law of total variance now. We didn't have that. So the way we did this before was that we would mix first and second moments to get uh, and then use the fact that to, we would mix first and second moments to get the first and second moment of, uh, of the random variable. Uh, in this case, the uh, random variable, I think it's cap C is what I'm using as that random variable. And then we took that we knew that the variance of cap C was the second moment minus the square of the first moment. But now let's redo the problem using the law of total variance. So I've got an insurance policy is going to reimburse one claim per year. I got a uh, uh, same problem that we've been talking about. I got a 20%, 80% mixture uh, of 
of a uh, uh, zero and a normal distribution. So uh, I'm going to introduce this indicator random variable to indicate whether I'm in the 20% case that the uh, claim amount is zero or whether I'm in the 80% case that the claim amount is normally distributed with a mean of, of, of 1,000, a very standard deviation of 400. So cap i is going to be the indicator random variable. And I'm looking for the expected value, I'm sorry, I'm looking for the variance of the claim amount cap c. So I'm applying, uh, I'm just going to color code some things here. I'm going to apl apply the law of total variance with the cap x being equal to a c and the, uh, and, and the cap y being the indicator random variable. So, uh, so I'll just change that here. Okay, so that's, uh, uh, that's, that's what I'm uh, going to calculate. Now, look, in that rule, the, in the law of total variance, let me color code some things here. I'm taking the expected value of the variance of cap C given cap I plus the variance of this uh, expected value. So what's in green and what's in red are themselves random variables. I'm taking the expected value of the green one and plus the variance of the red one, but they are themselves random variables. And in, in this case, everything's discrete. They're, well, in, in this case, this is a discrete discrete mixture. So I can think of these as discrete random variables uh, based on what the indicator is telling me. So the indicator may tell me that I'm, uh, my claim amount is a zero or the indicator might tell me that the claim amount is a normal and I know I got a 20%, 80% mixture here. So 20% of the time the expected value of the claim amount and the, and the variance of the claim amount are just going to be zero because in, uh, in that case the 20% of the time the uh, uh, I, I'm being indicated that the claim amount, that there was no claim. So the expected value of the claim amount would be zero and the variance of the claim amount would be zero. But in that other 80% of the time when I have this normal distribution, the uh, expected value of the claim amount, if, I, if I'm in the case that it's a normal distribution, the expected value of the claim amount is 1,000 and the variance of the claim amount would be the square of the standard deviation or 400 squared. And so now uh, I'm taking, uh, you know, I just follow the directions in this law of total variance. So let me take out the, uh, uh, the color here so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to, let's work on that first uh, term in, in red there at the top. I'm going to take the expected value of the of the variance of cap C given cap I. Well, the variance of cap C given cap I is this, this discrete random variable that's shown in the table there, and I'm taking the expected value of it, so that's just the sum product, and I'll get the 128, I'll get 128,000 when I do that. When I move to the second term, that's actually a little bit trickier to, to calculate the second term because I'm taking now, uh, if you look in the table, I've, got, I've highlighted the random variable that's under you know, consideration here, but I'm taking the variance of that random variable. And of course, to take the variance of that random variable, I need the second moment of that random variable minus the square of the first moment of that random variable. So there's a little bit more to that second term, calculating that second term here. But the, uh, let me color code some things here. The second moment of, of this random variable, uh, you know that's uh, that I'm taking the, I'm taking the variance of this uh, of the random variable that's in red in the table and the second moment of that thing is I, I square the values and then take the sum product and then I'd subtract off the square of the first moment so I'll leave it to you to to, to see that I did everything correct here and, and I, I know I know that I did and I'll show you why in just a second um, but uh, I get 160,000 when I do uh, when I do this uh, calculation. And again, pause the video if you need to to to, uh, 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 to verify that. And so then the law of total expectation would tell me then I just need to add together uh, the uh, expected value of the variance plus the variance of the expected value. In other words, add 128,000 and 160,000, and I get the 288,000. I knew that I got the right answer because that's uh, what I also got when I mixed moments. It, this was a this was a problem in the discrete mixtures uh, video, uh, exact problem in, in the discrete mixtures video, but I, of course, didn't use the law of total variance to calculate the variance in that in that video. I used uh, I used mixtures. Uh, I, I mixed uh, moments and then used the the, the fact that the variance is the uh, of cap C would be the second moment of cap C minus the square of the first moment of cap C. But again, I got the same I, I got the same value here, the two hundred eighty-eight thousand. Okay, so let's move on to uh, the continuous. Look, look what happens in the continuous case. Let me back up for just a second and make a, a comment that this is, this is uh, again, I, I just did the same problem, this SOA problem I did once in the discrete mixtures video using, uh, uh, by mixing uh, the moments of, of cap C. And now I've done it again using the law of total variance. 
in generally speaking, when you have uh, discrete mixtures, I don't. I personally don't think one of these methods is better than the other. Uh, the the first method of mixing moments and then and then and then calculating the variance, or the second mo second method here of using the law of total total variance. I don't. I don't generally see one as being any easier to do or, or more efficient or, or less time consuming than the other. In fact, mo most of the time, I, I would probably just mix moments. Uh, I, I, I would probably just mix moments in the discrete uh, mixture case. So now let's move to a continuous mixture problem. So this is um, uh, the problem I did, uh, the last problem I think in the video on continuous mixtures. This is where uh, cap n given cap lambda is a Poisson random variable with parameter cap lambda, uh, where cap lambda is uniform over the uh, uh, interval from zero to three. So now I'm gonna apply, I'm and I'd like to calculate the variance of, uh, of cap n. Um, so now uh, I'm going to apply the law of total variance uh, with the cap X here uh, being the cap N random variable. I'm looking for the variance of cap N. So cap X and cap, I'm going to replace cap, uh, uh, cap X by cap N. And cap Y I'm going to replace by uh, the cap lambda uh, random variable. And so when I do that, I just get this, this, this rule. Now let's look at the, uh, uh, the, the, the law here for total variances. I take the expected value of the variance of cap N given cap lambda and I'm adding the variance of the expected value of cap n given cap lambda. So what's in green and what's in red are both now I'm thinking of as random variables themselves. So let's think about well what are those random variables? Well cap n given cap lambda is a Poisson random variable uh, with, with parameter cap lambda. So being a Poisson random variable, the cap n given cap lambda is Poisson, so its expected value is the parameter cap lambda, and its variance is also the, the parameter cap lambda. And so look, this, this, this becomes a very nice equation. The law of total variance at the top then becomes the expected value of cap lambda plus the variance of cap lambda. Again, let me go back and, and color code the things for you because, uh, and this is uh, all based on the fact or, or the reason behind all this is that in blue there, cap n given cap lambda is Poisson with parameter cap lambda. That means its expected value is cap lambda and its variance is cap lambda. Its expected value is in red. The variance is in green. Go up to the law of total expectation and I'm just plugging in then a lambda for both for what's it, both in, in red and green. And so the var variance of cap n is just the expected value of cap lambda plus the variance of cap lambda. And now I use the fact that cap lambda is a uniform distribution over the interval from zero to three. So its expected value is 1.5 and its variance is, is a variance of a uniform from A to B is B minus A squared all over 12. So I get a 0.75. And when I add together those two values, I get the 2.25, which is the same value that I got when I did this problem in the continuous mixtures uh, 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 video. I invite you, I encourage you to go back and look at the continuous mixtures video and, and see that this was not a trivial problem using mixtures. It, it, this, this is, I consider this kind of be a, 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 you know, pretty easy solution using the law of total variance. This is the, the, the answer you get is pretty easy, but using a, if you try to solve this problem using continuous mixtures, uh, it's not, it, it, it can get kind of, kind of hairy there. And so, um, in the case of discrete mixtures, I would probably, if I'm asked to calculate a, calculate a variance of a random variable that's a discrete mixture, I would probably just mix moments. Uh, I usually, I, I, that would be my first go-to is just to mix moments in the discrete case. But in this continuous mixture case, if I'm asked to calculate the variance of a random variable that's defined to be defined by a continuous mixture, then I will use the law of total variance. That will be my, my, my go-to in a, in a continuous case. Okay, so uh, I hope you uh, found this, this video helpful. I'll see you in the next video.